All right. Um, been waiting on this one for a while. I've been uh, collecting boxes all week. Um, let me know if everybody can see and hear me. Um, I yeah, it's a couple minutes late. Instrumental. I the the streaming software wasn't working entirely correctly. So, but I'm I'm here now. We're ready to go. I have my uh, my coffee here, and uh, yeah. So yeah, once I get confirmation that y'all can hear me and we're all ready to go, uh, I will go ahead and start. Okay, good. Huh? I, weird on the audio, Jerry. So what I've got is a massive. Um, thing of packages here that by and large are related to the great bassoon uh no, not all uh, i think there's like eight things here total so we're going to start off with the most important one here that is in um red uh just came in last night uh so it's the newest one, everything else I've been getting over the next, the previous few days. So, like I said, this is the most important. Without this, the rest of the project cannot proceed. And it is a bag of whole bean dark roast coffee. Uh, there is absolutely no way to proceed without enough caffeination to... Fuel the creativity. Coffee. Needed. Thanks, coffee gods. Okay. Um, I have opened already a couple of these. Uh, just uh, to double check. Then I realized I was going to be getting so many um, packages. Might as well just unbox them all at once. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, what I've got here in the first package is um, the first taps and dies. So if you don't know, a tap and die uh, are what you use to make screws and screw holes. Um, this right here is a die, uh, and specifically this is a 256 die. Uh, these are the taps. So the die will create the threads on the screw. The taps will create the interior threads. Uh, and this will be used to create the rods. Um, and I've also got a uh, uh, die handle here so that I'll put the die into the handle and just turn it. Uh, with that, I also had to get um, cutting oil. So this will allow me to actually cut into the metal. And I'll be using um, stainless steel to cut. Um, so, but yeah, that's, that's the first thing. Uh, I ordered these from Vota Tool, uh, instrumental supply company. Um, and if you had a really great website, oddly, the only, uh, wind instrument they do not really supply parts for bassoon. So, uh, that's a little weird, but eh, it is what it is. Um, I've got... Is this, yeah, I've got one more package here from Voda Tool. Um, so we'll go, ahead, and I think I remember which one this is, but I want to double check. Brian, glad you've got them, glad you enjoy them. Um, Volume 4 will come out at some point. A revised version of Volume 1 will come out at some point. All right. So, what I've got here. These are the uh, taps for uh, the other sides of screw that I will be using. Uh, instrumental. Good news. I lowered the price on all of them. Uh, the ebooks are lowered in price um, it, on my website and the print books have been lowered in price on amazon.com uh, i can't remember what i lowered them to but they're like 40 percent off and i think i'm going to keep that as kind of the permanent pricing so i've got two sets of, of uh 
taps here. These are the 256. These are going to be for the rods. And these are 636. These are going to be for the pivot um, screws. Um, and I have ordered uh, pivot screws directly from Fox. And this is the size that they use. So I've got both the, the rod and the pivot screw taps here. These will be used um, to, to drill into the post so that I will be able to have screws in there. Uh, let's see. All right, this is from musicmedic.com. I will probably be doing a lot more ordering from them at some point. Uh, nice big long box here. The Great Bassoon will have a low A. Yes, yes it will. Uh, in fact, when I get around to doing a, a basically what will be a third edition of uh, Volume 2, uh, the Great Bassoon uh, chapter will be completely rewritten based on the, the project. All right, so for musicmedic.com, I have the actual uh, rods that will be used to create the, uh, the arbors. So the, I've got, what's that, uh, four here, and it should be a total of what, 36? Uh, it should be a total of like six feet. So, yeah, I think that's all I got from Music Medic. Let me double check on the replacement hinge drive. Yeah, and so this is 0 0.092 diameter. That's pretty standard. Uh, I had to... Uh, make sure I got the right size with uh, the the hinge tube that I've ordered, which uh, I'll get to here in a second. So yeah, this uh, Pukalo, this comes from musicmedic.com. Everything else I've uh, shown, except for the coffee, has come from Voda Tool. Uh, so yeah, these will be at least the the initial part of the 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 hinge rods. And that is why I've got the the tap and die here. This is the size needed for the this particular rod stock. Um, I also have, and I've ordered this before. I've had this for several months here. These are the uh, key rods. Uh, these are not the hinge tubes, but just for solid key rods that um, will... Uh, B for pivot keys. So I'll cut these to length. This is um, just solid uh, nickel silver. Uh, how much uh, were the rods? The the hinge rods for Music Medic, let me see what I paid for them. Um, Uh, actually does not say on my, my shipped invoice. They're not terrible. Um, I was an, under a 20 buck order for those. So there's that. Um, with that, uh, I have an order here from online metals. So the, the goal is I would love to be able to do all of the key work in nickel silver, but, uh, that is really not an option when dealing with hinge tubes, simply because I have found that getting uh, hinge tubes in uh, nickel silver is prohibitively difficult. I mean, they're super expensive, but brass, like I've got here, um, is uh, pretty easy to get and not terribly expensive. So this is the brass hinge tube that the rod stock will go into. And if I'm lucky, they will fit perfectly. And it is a really tight fit. It's gonna need some lapping, but that's expected. The ends of these are pretty uh, rough. This, they've just been kind of cut with a hacksaw, but I've got hinge tube here. So this is the hinge tube that I'll cut to length. And I've only got like four of these. I'll be able to order more, not, 
Not terribly difficult to get a hold of, but now I've got the hinge tube, I've got the rod stock, and so we're well on the way to having the parts to make the keys. Oh, what else do I have in here? <laughs> Sorry, there was another one. Uh, well, let's go right here to this one. Uh, this is from my good friend Rufus Acosta. Uh, he's in our, our Discord server. And I was saying, um, yeah, the, one of the next things I'm going to need to get is a post hole drilling jig. And that is a jig that will allow you to drill accurately the posts. And so that your... Um, uh, pivots are all perpendicular. And yes, Richard, your package has indeed arrived. And I'm saving that one for next. Because it's kind of made of awesome. So, I've got a, uh, Rufus just said, I have got, like, an extra post hole jig. I'll send it to you. And so, I was like, woohoo, you rock. And so, here it is. A post hole drilling jig. Uh, absolutely perfect. It is magnetized. Oh no, it's just got a, a magnet in it. Um, and so I'll be able to use this. Um, uh, so yeah, Ryan is asking, will I be using a custom vocal and reed? Yes, we'll talk about reed here in just a second. Uh, but yeah, so here is post hole drilling jig with um, a short arm and a long arm. Probably won't be using the long arm. I don't think I have any keys that are going to be quite this long. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I'm going to have to figure out exactly how to use this. But I've got four different long drill bits here that are going to be uh, in there. And I'm probably going to have to get a, a good drill in order to do this. Uh, but, yeah, so this will be a, a tool that I will need to learn how to use. But a big, big thanks to, to Rufus, who just happened to have a second one. And there's something else down here in the bottom. Let me make sure and see what it is. I think it may just be extra packing. Uh, it very well could be the jig from Fairies. Yeah, just extra packing. No Nothing, nothing else in there. So since since Richard is here, let me get his uh, package that he sent me. So I have a package here from one Mr. Richard Bobo of the sub Contrabassoon fame. And, and of course, if you follow Richard's channel, you know all the stuff that he has been doing. And... He has kindly created a, a monstrosity for me. Uh, something that is probably so far ahead of anything that I'm ready to do on the, the Great Bassoon that who knows if it'll work or not. Fingers crossed that it does. But it is an absolutely beautiful uh, straight shaper for the great bassoon this is what I will be using to make the reeds on it and Richard I know that you said that the the milling on this was a little imperfect but I have to say this is a phenomenal piece of machinery here um, it is a straight shaper spring-loaded um, it uh, has uh, screws on it to clamp it down you gotta see exact 
I'm just seeing how how exactly you've constructed it. And yet alignment pins in it. Uh, Richard, what are the alignment pins made out of? Are they? Is it just a uh, stainless steel rod in there? And honestly, Richard, you need to be selling these. These, this is, if it, you know, and not not just for um, the the great bassoon, but just for as in general. These, this is, I say as it uh, <laughs> is locked up, but yeah, this is just a wonderful, wonderful piece of, of machinery here. Um, I'm looking forward to be able to to make a read on it. That said, uh, my um, read making skills have uh, diminished over the past few years because I can't remember the last time I actually made a read. There we go. All right, got it unlocked now. It just froze up a little bit. So yeah, this is going to be absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, I might have to figure out why it alignment pins are semi-hardened stainless steel undersized shaft. There we go. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is it, it does tend to, to jam a little bit if it's not perfectly aligned. Um, I'm just wondering if there might be some some filing or sanding that could. Get that or maybe it just needs like a drop of oil yeah so it should have been a little bit more undersized can i hold the reed shaper to the camera um so yeah this is the reed shaper here a uh, piece of cane will go in here it is designed to take uh i believe it's designed to take regular contrabassoon cane richard if that's correct what is that 150 millimeters um, Seltzer, do I mainly play Legere's? I have got mostly Legere's on my single reeds. Um, my, my one, uh, Legere bassoon reed is kind of dead. Um, uh, it did not stay on my vocal well enough and kept falling off. And so it developed a few cracks in it. Um, but yeah, uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, and Richard, I'm sure we'll have some more comments on it in the, the chat, but... I can't wait to see what a, a read on this is going to eventually look like. And, well, you know, there, there is, there's one other thing um, that I have. Besides a lot of coffee. Oh, yeah, a lot of coffee. Um, yeah, there was, a, you probably remember there's a, a kind of a, a big box. Um, and, of course, this one has been opened, and a few people know kind of what this is. Um, I, I, I want an eBay auction. I have a new toy. Uh, this is going to be a long project here, but I've got a new saxophone. And this, of course, has absolutely nothing to do with the, um, the Great Bassoon, but it is a fun toy. Um, yeah, it is a soprano saxophone in the key of C. Yes, I finally have my own C soprano. I, uh, fa I was lucky enough to find a, an eBay auction where it was going really cheap. Um, I got it for all of $300. Not bad. Um, I, it is going to need a complete rebuild. Yes, Pukolo looks vintage because it is. It is 1919, officially making it the oldest instrument I own. It is 101. It is a Wurlitzer stencil, um, meaning this instrument was made by the Bisher Company. Um, it is silver plated. Uh, the silver plating is pretty worn. Uh, in fact, there are it, it's so tarnished that are, there is places where it looks like it is gold plating. But I cannot imagine that a, a stencil instrument would be gold plated. 
So I have to uh, think that this is a, a silver plated and that the silver plating is just so worn off that it has almost a gold look to it. Um, let's put it up to the camera here where you can see it. It is keyed to high E flat. Uh, if my my ventures in uh, subcon or <laughs> great bassoon building, uh, I'm not building the, the subcontra, Richard is. Um, if if my ventures in making the great bassoon are successful, I would like to actually rebuild the keys on it, uh, add a high E flat and high E key, uh, maybe even a high F sharp key. Uh, I'm sorry, a high E and a high F key. Uh, rebuild uh, the, the palm keys here to make them actually fit uh, a normal size human hand because you have to completely collapse them. So build them up. Uh, new key touches, maybe even rebuild the um, the pinky table on it. But uh, it's going to be a, a long process. And I, as right now, I may just restore it to add to original condition. Uh, but I, I'd rather have it to be a little bit more uh, functional in that regard. Um, was able to buy an old ambassador Los Angeles cornet from 1948. Bucks on Canadian works perfectly. Uh, probably, but the the market for old cornets like that is not really high. Um, it's it's a gamble uh, on, to see if you would uh, be able to make any money on that. Uh, it's useful, but sounds not useful at all. Um. It, yeah, it's going to be useful when I get around to recording Symphony Number no. 3, uh, which does have a C soprano saxophone part in it. So that's one of the reasons I got it, to be able to play that part. Uh, it also means I'll probably be able to incorporate C soprano into my own music a lot more. Uh, I can simulate uh, an oboe and play oboe music. Well, that's not really the, the point of it. The point of it is to have a C soprano sax. If I wanted to simulate oboe music, I would get an oboe. Uh, that said, for the times when I do have church gigs where it says C instrument, I now have a, a better choice. A lot of times I've transposed that onto whatever. I, it, I absolutely hate getting something that says C instrument and they just say, oh, just whatever you bring, it's fine. I'm like, uh, okay. And they really probably want a violin or a flute, but Flutes at my absolute worst woodwind. I don't like playing it in public. I will if they pay me, but meh. But uh, yeah, so lots, lots of goodies here. Um, making the the great bassoon is one step closer. I have one more package that's going to be coming in here this week, uh, but this is my only day off for the next uh, foreseeable future. Um. And the, the package that I have coming is going to be all the pivot screws and body screws that are coming from Fox, uh, as well as a, a hand rest bracket. So I'll be able to put a, a hand rest on the Great Bassoon. And I will probably uh, try that on uh, the this instrument over here the one that's in PLA and then if that's successful I'll transfer it over to the uh, ABS one that's behind me that you can't see. Um, uh, I well, I see that but for like high school bands instead of getting a sax player to learn oboe in a few weeks and sounding terrible have them play C soprano sax. Well that's not not what you should do. You should actually get a um, an actual oboe player, and high school band directors should know that um, an oboe is an important part of the band. So make sure you you know train players to play the oboe and the bassoon. Would you be able to play one of those super mini bassoons for a C instrument? And no, I I. I wouldn't use one of those 
uh, until somebody actually makes a good one. Uh, can you list the manufacturers that you know that made C. Sopranos? Um, so we know that of the American makers, Martin, Kahn, and Bisher all made C. Sopranos. Um, in Europe, Yvette and Schaefer did. Um, of course, Adolf Sachs ha made a few of them. And there are a handful, uh, and when I say handful, two, three, four, probably, Selmer Mark Sixes. Um, but as far as I know, that may be an exhaustive list of companies that made C. Sopranos. The bulk of what you'll see are the three American makers, um, uh, Con Bisher and Martin. Oh, Holton. Holton's the other one. Holton made their own. And in fact, the Holtons are probably the most desirable because they did they were keyed up to high F. So the Holtons always had the high F on them. And you don't see them come up very often. And when they do, um, they um, they go for quite a bit. This old uh, Bisher stencil, um, and I, I'm, I'm honestly not sure because it, it was an auction that ended up being listed twice and the, the seller kept bringing the price down um, and no one was grabbing it. So I, I lucked out at 300 bucks. That's, you know, right in the range that I typically spend for a saxophone. Um, I, I wish I could teach my band director to accept someone to play oboe and alto clarinet and so many other things. At least he let me play great bass clarinet. All right. It, Number one, it is not your job to correct your band director. That is how you are going to uh, make the band directors not like you. Never try and correct them. Even if you think you're right, um, uh, don't try and correct them. It's just, it's it's rude. Um I have an alto sax from the mid 1980s that only goes up to high F. Makes playing the F sharp above that very awkward. That's still um, uh, you can still get alto saxes uh, with uh, uh, just a high F and no F sharp key. Uh, Aster as I thought Wurlitzer was con. Uh, Wurlitzer uh, got instruments from all three of those manufacturers: Martin, uh, Con, and Bisher. Uh, this particular one, uh, I can almost guarantee, came out of the Bisher factory. And the easiest way for me to tell is how the um, G-sharp key is arranged. Uh, it is the weirdest configuration on the G-sharp key. The, the pivot is up here, and it's got the arm coming down. And then uh, it's... It's... It's it's so weird that I'm not, I'm not even sure exactly how best to describe it. Um, I don't think there's such a thing as a curved C soprano. As far as we know, there are two curved C sopranos that exist. Um, I think one went through Quinn the Eskimo a few years back, and I think Paul Cohen has the other. And I think that is the extent of all the curved C sopranos that exist. All other C sopranos are straight. Um, you're much more likely to find a curved sopranino. Uh, curved B flat soprano is totally common. Uh, curved B flat soprano. So yeah, you can see the difference here in the C sop and the B flat sop. Uh, you can tell it is substantially smaller even with yeah, it's it's very weird, um, and it's it's um, what I would call reverse sprung. So it, I'm not even sure exactly how to explain the springing on it, but it works. And I almost wonder if it's so weird and backwards that it might actually be a better G sharp mechanism because the G sharp mechanism on most saxophones is notoriously difficult and goes out uh, often. You know, most uh, the key that sticks the most. Uh, hey, sweeter. Um, uh, yes. So yeah, I started. Uh, what is that? Nearly thirty minutes ago now. Yeah, right at thirty minutes ago. Uh, I got a whole 
big bunch of stuff, keys and parts and all sorts of goodies to make the key work. Um, I am slowly getting there. Uh, hinge tube, hinge rod, rod stock, uh, which I've had for a while, taps and dies, uh, cutting oil, post hole jig, great bassoon shaper, straight shaper, and uh, of course the C soprano saxophone because, you know, that uh, as far as feasible, affordable uh, saxophones, I now basically have the full set. So I have seven sizes of saxophone, E flat soprano, C soprano, B flat soprano, E flat alto, C tenor, B flat tenor, and a berry. Um, of course, I would love to add to that a bass and an F alto. Um, for, uh, for right now, I don't think either one of those is going to become affordable. Um, you know, unless somebody just wants to gift me one. Uh, Stranger things have happened. But, uh, what does Jared say? That's mostly because they are articulated. The G-sharp was his own separate key. Yeah, it, right. How many F altos are extant? I would probably say 150 to 200. That's, um, I'd be about right. They come up for sale often enough to know that they're out there. Um, with something like the Kano Sax, we know 26, and I think that's pretty close to an exact number there. Um, the majority of the F altos uh, are, of course, the Kahn Mezzo Soprano. Um, I know that there are a few um, French made from the 1800s, but not many. Uh, I think Paul Cohen has one F alto that is not a con. Um, otherwise, I think 99% of them are the cons. All right. Do you have any other questions? If not, um, I will go sign off and go find some lunch. Uh, that's exciting. Seeing you and Jared and Richard making things happen is like a vital resource for people who have the ideas but don't know how to start and execute. You know, I, I've had the ideas for a long time, and it's really kind of the, the collaboration of all three of us that each one of us has... Uh, I won't say each one of us has the all the, uh, all the information, uh, parts of the information, because... I think Richard and Jerry probably have a lot more of the in, of the information than I do, and I kind of feel a lot that I I am uh, using a lot of their their knowledge to help build this. Um, uh, but you know, the three of us together, you know, can problem solve a lot of it. Um, so I like I'll ask, hey, what are you using for hinge rod? What are you using for rod stock? Um, how are you making your, your key cups? Um, and, you know, there, there are other people that are helping. I've gotten a lot of good information from Steve Fox, the clarinet maker. He, he's given me some great resources. Um, but a lot of it is just, uh, there's a lot of Google searching. There really is. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, if there are no more questions, um, I may start uh, disassembling the C SOP. Um, I will probably disassemble it and do a, a soak in Tarnex to get rid of the bulk of the tarnish on here. I've got one spot down here where it has a real nice um, satin silver finish. So it should eventually look like my, my Bisher Alto, the same uh, finish here. Um, hopefully. But, at any rate, uh, I will see you guys later. Um, and thank you guys for indulging me in uh, early Christmas. So, thanks so much, guys.